All right, I think we can get started. So my talk is about building community in the cybersecurity industry. Um, this is going to be a non-technical talk for technically minded people. Um, my name is Sherry Burgett. I am the um, Cyber Intelligence Director for the Mining and Metals ISAC. Um, I've been working with them for a few years um, since its creation. Um, and a little bit of a backstory about how we started this ISAC. Um, first, um, what is an ISAC? An ISAC is a, an information sharing uh, analysis center. And each industry creates one of these to um, help protect its industry and work together as a community to, um, to solve the problems that are industry specific. And they share intelligence with each other um, in theory. And, uh, um, and that helps raise the um, cybersecurity level of the industry as a whole. And basically every activity that we do is in effort of that goal. Um, the mining ISAC actually has a unique history because it wasn't formed by presidential directive. Uh, mining isn't considered critical infrastructure on the critical infrastructure list. So um, a number of years ago, uh, eight companies, eight mining companies, were attacked by the same threat actor, um, Fin10. And then one of those attacks was a big, very public breach of a company called Gold Corp. And after that breach, the mining companies actually sat together in a room, the CISOs, and discussed, hey, you know, all these other companies also got hit by the same threat actor. Maybe we should be doing something about it. And so that was our founding um, of our ISAC. Um, so some of the challenges of building community in, um, in cybersecurity is that it is counterintuitive to our training. We're trained to put up walls and defenses. We're not trained to be vulnerable and human. So, um, but a lot of the soft skills and everything is is very imperative to working as an industry. And how do you get people to share information about maybe a potential breach with you if uh, they don't trust you? And so there's a lot of paranoia and by design, um, no trust um, between competitors, between different, uh, different industries. And so even the cybersecurity industries, uh, or yeah, cybersecurity uh, companies weren't doing a very good job of sharing. And then another um, issue is we don't see a lot of sharing organizations share very well between each other. And so, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with how we're trained to guard data. We're, we're trained to guard data with, you know, as if it is the most holy grail. And by design. So whenever we have a piece of information that may be helpful to someone else, we keep it secret. And the government does the same thing. The, the DHS wants to um, classify things at the highest level first and then, you know, slowly lift the veil, you know, as they determine that maybe it might not be uh, harmful to the public if it got out. Um, why is it more important than ever? Um, community strengthens resiliency. We need community. Um, if anyone's ever been involved in a breach, they know the emotional toll that it can take on people who are you know, involved in it. It's, it's, it involves the entire company. It, it, it involves uh, supply chains. You know? And even the act of defending, people are getting burnt out on their teams. And it's because... Uh, is because we have so much to do and there's an unlimited amount of work that we could possibly do to secure our companies. And so there's just, the workload is just piled on to people and they're getting burnt out. And so uh, what a community does is we can share um, resources, we can share uh, knowledge. And a good place to do those are like at these conferences where we can share ideas. 
Um, we just spent three years working remotely and on Zoom calls. And I'm not sure about any of you, but if you, uh, if you had you know, strong relationships with people before, the best you could do with a Zoom call is maybe maintain it. A Zoom call can't build a relationship. Um, building relationships have to happen in person. They happen, they happen over beer. They, they happen, you know, just sort of sitting and chatting and uh, being able to speak freely. So, um, where do you find your people for your community? Um, this is a great place. I love CornCon. CornCon is uh, a unique setting because it is Midwest. Um, people are more open socially. Um, they are more friendly just by nature, people will say hello to you and say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. And you don't actually find that at every conference. I was just at a conference in Vegas and uh, I spent half a day and not a single person talked to me. And you wouldn't find that here. So you guys are super lucky, awesome, awesome conference to be at because I don't think a single person will walk by, by you without at least saying hello. Oh. Um, so, a little bit of a tip for when you're at conferences and you're, uh, you're hanging out with your buddies and you're, you're here with your close friends. And so, a, a, big, a big tendency is for people to gather in a circle and they're talking with their friends. But one of the things that you can do to be more inviting to uh, people who, you know, may be new is to open your circle. Sort of make it like an open Pac-Man and so that other people can join in. And when you're looking around the room and you see a couple people talking and they're facing, you know, uh, each other, that's kind of a closed circle. But if they're sort of facing side by side, they're kind of inviting more people to join them. And so open your circles at these conferences. You know, it's great to have your friends and buddies, but you actually want to be more inviting to people who may not be um, as new or, or as experienced in cybersecurity. Or maybe there's that expert that showed up that doesn't know anybody that has a wealth of information that maybe you could learn something from. Um, another great place to find your people is classes. And do them in person. If you've ever taken a, a class in person, you are in a room full of 50, maybe, maybe even 50 people that are interested in the same exact topic you are. If you go to a talk, say on ransomware, you are in a room full of people that have the same interest as you. So don't let those, don't let those opportunities pass you by. And even if the talk sucks, or even if the class kind of sucks and the instructor kind of misses, all the people at that talk or conference are potential um, uh, network people. Maybe, maybe even your next hire, or maybe the person who's going to give you an opportunity, or someone you can work together in the future at a project. Um, definitely engage your local community if you, if you have one. I live out in the middle of nowhere in Maine, and I decided that I was way too isolated. And so I got myself an apartment in Calgary so that I can be closer to people and have local meetups with people that I work with. Because um, three years of being isolated and being stuck on the wrong side of the border for where I work um, kind of hindered me in my ability to function. So I'm going to I'm going to tell a little bit of a story. So um, has anyone here ever been to DEF CON? Woo, yay, yay DEF CON people. Has anyone here ever attended Toxic Barbecue at DEF CON? Yay, Toxic Barbecue. <laughs> I think I have a badge from you that I bought t last year. Um, so my, I brought my 18-year-old son to DEF CON last year. And I was shocked when he said to me, how do you just go up to people and talk to them? Because he's very outgoing. And, and I said, oh, I don't know how. And so, so I'm like, I just go up and talk to them. 
I didn't have the proper instruction to be able to tell people how, how do you network at parties because it just came naturally to me. But it doesn't necessarily come naturally to everybody, um, especially in, you know, in the technology field. And so what he did was, was by the end of the party, he came up with an algorithm because he's a, he's a math major. Um, and he came up with an algorithm to how to network at a party for the people who don't know how. And I, th I thought it was pretty interesting. So um, networking at a party, what he told me he did was he's like, you know, people would just come up to me and ask me questions. And I'd answer them and we'd have a good chat. And so I listened to them and I put them into my memory bank and I remembered them. I remembered the questions they asked me. And then the next person that I ran into, I would ask them those questions so I could start the conversation. And then the better the questions in his little memory bank for networking at parties, the better the conversation. And if it led to, if it led to something even, even more interesting, he just put that in his little memory bank. And if it flopped, he kind of deleted it. And so I just thought it was interesting that a math major would need a algorithm. But he was super excited. He says, I cracked the code. <laughs> and so here, that, that, is, that is my gift for my 18-year-old my math major to you. Um, so building trust. And as I said, a big problem with my, with my field is getting people to share information. Information that they want secret. And I can't ask someone I've never met in person or had a very long conversation with to tell me information about their company without them knowing me. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of unreasonable to ask. Um, so building trust is, is a, uh, it, ta it takes some effort, but you can, you can actually build instant trust with someone. There's, there's different methods of, you know, whether you have authority or, you know, reputation that precedes you or someone introduces you, um, like maybe from your network, that you can help build that trust. Um, this is actually something that... Um, I think that a lot of people would find more relatable in this industry, even a technically minded person, because building trust is a social engineering exercise. Attackers use it. They use it to get information out of you. Body language. And as I said, you know, uh, open your circles. But being awkward is okay, also. Uh, we, being awkward is humbling, it's relatable. We don't need the most charismatic, outgoing person. In fact, if it doesn't suit the setting, it's kind of, it's kind of off-putting. Like maybe, maybe you're coming on too strong. But a, a, few, uh, a few tips on body language is make some eye contact with people. Smile. That's actually a, a, a second nature for a lot of people here in the Midwest. But maybe someone from Boston or New York City, it isn't second nature because you, you're trained to avoid eye contact you're trained to, if you, if you make eye, eye contact with someone while you're walking down a busy city, uh, a busy road, they're going to bump right into you. And so you're kind of trained against it. And so sort of make yourself more approachable. And I think like a couple, a couple seconds, meet someone, I smile, say, hi, how's your day? And, and that makes you more approachable. Another big hit is your reputation. Building your reputation takes time. And it's not necessarily your background or your knowledge, but th this is more about your character and your trustworthiness and how you handle yourself. And so if you are, you know, you're flying into a conference and you're acting very badly at the airport and you're recognizable and someone sees you at the conference later, they're going to already think that. And so, you know, your character of how you act on a day-to-day -day basis matters. Um, it's, it's also your currency. Uh, we do a lot of favors for each other. And one of the quickest uh, psychological tricks to make a, making a new friend is to ask them for a favor. Um, smokers do this. They're like, Can I borrow your lighter? 
You know, that's, that's a quick favor. Could I borrow your pen? A quick favor. But it, it instantly makes some sort of connection that maybe you can lead to a conversation. Look, oh, how was your day? You know? And so don't be afraid to be the first person to ask for a favor. But when someone asks you for a favor, definitely take them up on that offer. Giving people a place to go. So my, my background before I worked in cybersecurity, I was a military spouse for 20 years. I led an FRG. Um, and uh, our role was basically to, uh, to build up morale at home and to help people navigate the military system while, um, while, people, uh, while their spouses were deployed. And having that network for people that were away from home, away from family, so that they had someone to call on if something happened. And then even more serious is something happened overseas. We had a community that was built up to, to be able to support each other through it. And so um, when, you, when you're building and leading a community, it's important to have, give people a place to go, a home. Um, and, this, and this is done just by scheduling regular activities. Um, and it can be very simple, but something, something consistent. And even if nobody shows up, people have a place to go and a place to turn to. And so one of the things that we did with my FRG is we went whitewater rafting and we'd go for walks once a week. And so um, we, we built up this community at home. Our, our FRG was awesome, by the way. Um, and definitely in, in person is better. But whenever things happened, you know, somebody got overwhelmed with stress, um, they're, they're, they got behind on housework. We would go over to each other's houses and, and, and help each other clean, our, clean their houses um, and, and help them get out of the depression. And no judgment, you know? Just, just sort of we were there for each other. And uh, again, in person, in person, in person, in person. After, after COVID, in person is always better. Um, so, so this brings us to our, um, our main feature of this talk, is uh, we're going to do a little bit of group exercise, and I, 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 I think I had my first recruit at the back. So we're going to start a new unsecret society. Um, the name of the society is going to be the Order of the Corn. Any objections? Uh, our objective is to become the largest unsecret society in the cybersecurity community, potentially by next year. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask for volunteers. Who wants to join this unsecret society? Ooh, yay, yay, yay. OK, well, I have three new recruits. These, these new recruits are going to help me. Um, Grow this, grow this community. Um, and it, well, actually, it's not a community yet. It's still, it's just a society. It will be a community when um, we actually help each other. But uh, so, if you can, if you want to, you can join the order of the corn. You can hashtag join the order or hashtag order of the corn uh, on any on any, any of your social media to. Uh, advertise it. Um, you can invite people here to join the order. Um, and we're going to see what we can grow or organically or inorganically as possible um, before the end of next year. And I think we do have the potential to spread this far and wide, even with three people. And I, only, I, I went through that in a whole 20 minutes. And so, uh, shoot. <laughs> um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually open it up for questions because I think I laid a lot on you um, about, about what we do or what I do. And um, I'd like some audience participation. Does, do we have any questions? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, he asked if uh, meetups are a good. Uh, uh, he asked, meetups are a good place to find people if there's a methodology for, um, for, for locating these meetups. I I say Google is your friend. Um, I used to use like the the meetup app, but. Uh, 
I don't know if it's still a thing. So, um, so definitely find your, Google your local chapters. Um, lo look up a uh, local hacker group, you know, in whatever city you are. Um, and there are some of these chapters that, are, that have grown massive and they meet up each other, at, they meet up at, at conferences later. Um, DC has a huge com community of A CISSP meetup? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, if you have like um, if you have your CISSP, there's there's, there's definitely local um, IC squared uh, meetups. Um, any any topic that you think that I should revisit? <laughs> oh no. I'm in trouble. I'm in danger. <laughs> what was that? Okay. I think uh, I think th that 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 ends my that ends my talk. Um, I'll definitely be looking forward to seeing you all. And thank you for very much for coming. And uh, I got my three three recruits now. <laughs> Woo! Three recruits of our, our of our uh, our cult. It is called Order of the Corn. Definitely, you want to join the Order of the Corn. <laughs>